Hey guys, so this is what I would look like if I were a quasar uh, deep in space with a galaxy between me and the camera. So tonight we are going to try to image a quasar. Uh, it's also called the twin quasar and it's pretty far away, it's pretty impressive and it's also very uh, historically interesting. So we're going to learn about this and we're going to try to capture it tonight. It's going to be a bit difficult but uh, we'll see, it's going to be fun. I have never tried this before so exciting. So before I left I of course did some research and looked into this double quasar. So I have a few pictures here that I found online on different forums and that's pretty much how I found out about it in the first place and it's really interesting. And so by doing more research, um, I also found the NASA uh, image from Hubble, which is really, really crazy. Look at that. This is a double quasar. And you can kind of see the galaxy in the center here that's hiding, uh, you know, that's hiding the center. But it's, it's really insane to, to see that how, you know, to see a picture like this where it's so zoomed in and still see uh, two individual um, bright, you know, what looks like stars, while in reality it's only just one. So it's pretty crazy. And so the other thing that I found out that was really, really incredible is that there is a lag between the two uh, dots here. So be between quasar A and B, there is actually a about 417 days of lag. So which equals to about, I think, yeah, it says here 14 months. So between quasar A and quasar B, uh, between those two dots of lights, uh, there is a 14 month lag. So one of these, um, it's actually taking more time to go around um, the galaxy here, which is pretty crazy. So what we see here uh, is actually coming to us 14 months before or after the light that comes from this one here. So it's pretty crazy. So tonight I'm going to be using the same uh, telescope and camera as usual, the QHY 600C and the SVX 130. So this is when, uh, so the double quasar is very, very tiny. So this is when you wish you had a, uh, a crop sensor camera. So the QHY 600C is a full frame camera, so it's going to be even smaller in the field of view. Uh, luckily, uh, it's a really good camera, so we can you know, crop it out a lot and zoom in without destroying all of the data, uh, you know, without having so much noise. Uh, so hopefully we can just zoom in all the way and crop it out so we can have a, a good view on the double quasar. So the double quasar is pretty important in the astronomy world because it was the very first object where there was proof of gravitational lensing. So this means that uh, the object looks completely distorted uh, from our point of view. So for example here, uh, when we look towards the quasar, uh, we see two dots instead of one because there is a galaxy in front of it that kind of distorts the, uh, the object. So we see uh, two quasars instead of one, but it's the same thing. So it's pretty interesting. And this was done in 1979, so they discovered that 1979 thanks to this quasar. So tonight I'm not going to slew to it, I'm going to slew to NGC 3079, which is the closest galaxy to it, uh, just because I couldn't find the quasar's name in SGP. But uh, with this field of view, uh, it's going to be very simple, I'm just going to frame it on the galaxy. Uh, it's an okay galaxy, it's pretty... Uh, it's, it's meh, it's kind of like edge on and it's not very bright. But um, the field of view we have is going to include, no matter what, uh, the double quasar anyway. So I'm just going to find it later uh, when I'm uh, done with the image. So, yeah, so I'm just waiting for dark now. The sun is setting just below the mountains there. And so hopefully we can start soon. Mmm, delicious. Jambon beurre. First frame coming in. Uh, the guiding is pretty bad right now. I think it's because the uh, target is so high. And I probably should recalibrate. Uh, yeah, let's see what the full frame, I mean, what the, the first shot looks like. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to actually see uh, the double quasar on this shot, but let's see. Okay, that's the Galaxy NGC 3079. And now the double quasar, I'll try to look around for it, but. I'll probably find it at home uh, later, once it's processed. 
Okay, so I'll do four hours on this, and hopefully the guiding will stabilize uh, over time. It was a pretty good night. Uh, the moon rose, which I think was almost full, uh, but now I've been imaging a lot lately with the moon being up because I just miss imaging so much. So even when the moon is out, I just go to the desert anyway and image. So I'm about to try to sleep right now, everything is launched and uh, on the first frame here I'm really concerned because I found uh, the double quasar and it's just super super small, let me show you guys, it's just very 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 small and I'm afraid uh, we won't be able to see the two uh, separate dots of light, um, let's see if we zoom in like crazy, if we go higher, see look at this. It's right here. The problem is, it's so small in my field of view that uh, it looks like just one long star. So I don't believe it's going to look nice, but oh well. I mean, it's obviously there, is, mm, it's, there are two of them, like it's not just one dot, it's like two dots that are just, just very, very close to each other, that are like touching. So I was you know, hoping that there would be a, a more divided um, object here but oh well i'll just keep going and we'll see what happens so i'm gonna put this away i'm all comfy here and uh yeah so i'll wake up at 2 a.m to check on the cable and all that and uh yeah good night And here you can even see the shadow of the telescope by the moon because of how bright it was. And then I got some really nice pink desert clouds from the sunrise. And then I took some flats. So guys, if you're gonna take some flats, make sure you do it either before you start imaging or before the sun is up. Because when the sun is up, it might introduce some light leak because of how bright it is and ruin your flats. Alright guys, so the sun is rising behind me right now, so uh, I'm going to pack up. The night was very very cold, uh, I was freezing to death as usual. Um, and when I woke up around 3am, the moon was on the side there and I could see a lot of clouds everywhere. So I'm hoping that nothing is... I can salvage some stuff, but I'm, I'm guessing like about half the data is ruled by clouds. So hopefully I can uh, still stack a bunch of them and we'll see the results. So I'm going to pack up and we'll go home and process. And then I packed up and I enjoyed a nice uh, sunrise while eating uh, my cereals and orange juice. And it was a really nice morning. The sun looks amazing and you can see all the layers from the mountains uh, in the distance there, it's pretty cool. So using my reference pictures, I was able to find the double quasar on our test shots here and so the issue is, they do not look very crisp, and using Blink, I went through all the files individually. I first zoomed in on the double quasar and went through all of them. I deleted all the ones that are not super crisp or that are slightly um, elongated. So if there was a tiny bit of wind or if there was uh, some type of tiny clouds that passed by. So I only kept the frames that showed two uh, perfect crisp dots. And one more thing I did is I drizzled uh, times two, and I will show you here the difference between the double quasar uh, not drizzled and drizzled. And the left is not drizzled, as you can see it's all pixelized, and the right is drizzled. Uh, I understand you can just achieve this result by upscaling or downscaling or whatever. Uh, I never actually went too deep into that, but I just drizzle and that's, I like it.
And so after uh, some hours of processing, here is the result. This is the image as a whole. And if we zoom in, you can see here the double quasar, so the twin quasar, uh, pretty cool. And uh, even the galaxy looks pretty nice, so it's, it's really awesome. So it was pretty fun and challenging. I really like um, imaging something that's not often done and that's uh, a difficult thing to image. So, and if you guys are interested and are looking for a challenge, uh, try something similar. Try to look for something hard. Try to look for something uh, rare to see or something historically interesting like this. And uh, it's pretty rewarding, so uh, good luck. And I will see you guys next time. And of course, as always, clear skies.